And the readings will now be given by Florence from Georgia. From the Bible, Isaiah. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them, according to all which I command you, so shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I, and said, so be it, O Lord. Luke. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time, Thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And they were all amazed and speak among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. John, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, 
for I do always those things that please him. I and my father are one. I will read correlative passages from science and health with key to the scriptures and prose works, both by Mary Baker Eddy. When tempted to sin, we should know that evil proceeded not from God, good, but is a false belief of the personal senses. And if we deny the claims of these senses and recognize man as governed by God, spirit, not by material law, the temptation will disappear. Our great way shower, set fast to the end in his obedience to God's laws, demonstrated for all time and people the supremacy of good over evil and the superiority of spirit over matter. He was the way shower and Christian scientists who would demonstrate the way must keep close to his path that they may win the prize. The way in the flesh is a suffering which leads out of the flesh. The way in spirit is the way of life, truth, and love, redeeming us from the false sense of the flesh and the wounds it bears. This threefold Messiah reveals the self-destroying ways of error and the life-giving way of truth. To say there is a false claim called sickness is to admit all there is of sickness, for it is nothing but a false claim. To be healed, one must lose sight of a false claim. If the claim be present to the thought, then disease becomes as tangible as any reality. To regard sickness as a false claim is to abate the fear of it. But this does not destroy the so-called fact of the claim. In order to be whole, we must be insensible to every claim of error. As with sickness, so is it with sin. To admit that sin has any claim whatever, just or unjust, is to admit a dangerous fact. Hence, the fact must be denied. For if sin's claim be allowed in any degree, then sin destroys the at one or oneness with God, a unity which sin recognizes as its most potent and deadly enemy. Divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. No reservation is made for any lesser loyalty. Obedience to truth gives man power and strength. Submission to error superinduces loss of power. Jesus presented the ideal of God better than could any man whose origin was less spiritual. By his obedience to God, he demonstrated more spiritually than all others the principle of being and the force of his admonition, if ye love me, keep my commandments. In the science of mind, you will soon ascertain that error cannot destroy error. You will also learn that in science there is no transfer of evil suggestions from one mortal to another. For there is but one mind, and this ever-present omnipotent mind is reflected by man and governs the entire universe. You will learn that in Christian science, the first duty is to obey God, to have one mind, and to love another as yourself. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He knew that obedience is the test of love, that one gladly obeys when obedience gives him happiness. Selfishly or otherwise, all are ready to seek and obey what they love. When mortals learn to love aright, when they learn that man's highest happiness 
that which has most of heaven in it is in blessing others and self-immolation. They will obey both the old and the new commandments and receive the reward of obedience. Obeying the divine principle, which you profess to understand and love, demonstrates truth. Never absent from your post, never off guard, never ill-humored, never unready to work for God, is obedience. Being faithful over a few things. If in one instance obedience be lacking, you lose the scientific rule and its reward namely to be made ruler over many things. A progressive life is the reality of life that unfolds its immortal principle. God is the fountain of light, and he illumines one's way when one is obedient. The disobedient make their moves before God makes his, and make them too late to follow him. Be sure that God directs your way, then hasten to follow under every circumstance. We cannot obey both God, good and evil. In other words, the material senses, false suggestions, self-will, selfish motives, and human policy. We shall have no faith in evil when faith finds a resting place and scientific understanding guides man. Honesty in every condition, under every circumstance, is the indispensable rule of obedience. To obey the principle of mathematics 99 times in 100, and then allow one numeral to make incorrect your entire problem, is neither science nor obedience. To be with the Lord is to be in obedience to the law of God, to be absolutely governed by divine love, by spirit, not by matter. 